In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Father T died with Christ and rose with Christ to new life. May he now share with Christ eternal glory. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Father T, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may, may exalt now forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace, and for Father T, a time to fish and a time to soar. <laughs> the word of the Lord. We do not want you to be you may not grieve like the rest. Jesus, bring him with the coming of the Lord, will sure of command, and the therefore. Bethany was near Jerusalem. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to me. If you have God, God will give you. Martha said, believes in me, even if he dies. Do you believe? I would like to welcome all of you here streaming with us. Again, it's for his family as they sit before us, our sympathy and our support and of Father T and his life and how he loved that relation time part of that for me is this is that father by the house often and, and take father and they would play cribbage and, and you know I, I I'll just be upfront with you this last week that people have he helped my but nobody knows that and on and on and what but him 45 or 46 years ago first impressions oh my god at that time the voice of God. Smile. But it didn't words that you used to do. We called him many things, you know. When I first had a hijrah, this big end that began to attract me. I, I you know, when he out of the church with his walker, he's given all has taken my faith life to a whole different So my God, I'm you know, a few years ago we're into the lives of the flock. Okay, let's, he smelled like us. He was one of us. Even beyond himself, he was to trust him. So we knew that in those moments, it was a silence full of 
where he was soaking in deep of us. And, and it wasn't that he was behind us pushing, and he was able to share his, not only as a priest, but as a huge struggles. Again, thank you to the family for picking this and go, yeah, okay, stuff. He said, I got some ideas for you. From this word, first reading from Ecclesiastes is this. Is so when there's a time to live Christians and people in the midst of our pain and mourning and sorrow today, boy, and I'm not talking about a false joy. We know that this is not the end. Not, those, again, not, not to be silly, that Christ has risen from the knee on his journey to celebrate new life, where today, because of T's life, are launched. With our reading day, this is was here person something like this sixty plus years of back pain. Never complained to me. You knew when it was hurting because he wouldn't say much. I mean, he would say less than he usually says. <laughs> A man of few words, but man, did he speak? Did he speak through his actions? Did he speak through his presence? But I never once heard him say, Lord. If you had been here, he always knew the Lord was there. Always knew the Lord was there. And what he taught me in how I've become the priest I am today, here's what he taught me. And this, this, this to me is one of the most important things I've ever experienced in life. He taught me to take the person in front of me as created in the image and the likeness of God and deserving dignity and respect and not to be judged taught me to listen, to listen and to see the holiness that was right in front of me. And how grateful I am for that. Because I know when I fall off that, that road, so to speak, if somebody becomes a burden, or if I think they're wasting my time, I have to think, okay, you know, what did he teach me here? He taught me that dignity and respect. He taught me to listen and to see the reality in front of me and not to judge it, but to be present to it. And the times that he did that for me, and I'm guessing the times that he did that for you, again, how attractive is that? How attractive is that faith? And again, you know, I'm not sta standing up here saying he was a perfect man because he's not, he wasn't. None of us are. And yet he knew that. And he was comfortable living with that. You know, most of us try to hide it and pretend it's not there. Man, he didn't pretend. He didn't hide it. It was right there in front of us. And again, that's where I go back to Bob and Sandy. I just love the way you treated him. Because it would have been easy at times to say, okay, I've had enough of this. You know, you never got to that place. And I'm so grateful, so grateful for your example. So today, like I said, you know, I, I was telling some of my priest friends over here today, you know, sometimes it's really hard to preach at a funeral of somebody that you know so well because you can go on for hours. <laughs> I'm not so sure you're all ready for that right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what I'm going to invite us to do at this moment is, you know, I'm going to take my time going back to the chair, but just, just take a moment. Just take a moment of silence. And somebody mentioned to me last night, you know, the silence that T would offer us was so powerful, so powerful, his silence at times. And again, what he's taught me over these many years is how, how a beautiful a prayer silence can be. So I'm going to go sit down just for a moment of silence, and I invite you in that silence to really receive, to really receive what Jesus wants to give you today, at this moment. To receive that in such a way that you want to respond. And I invite you and myself just to sit for a moment and respond to the love of Christ, to respond to the memory of T, to respond to what Jesus wants us to receive from him at this time. You know, and maybe it's a prayer of thanksgiving. Maybe it's a prayer of hope. Maybe it's a prayer of saying, I'm not sure what to pray for today. Maybe it's a prayer of numbness. But let's just allow that love of Christ to pour upon us, at least for a moment. So when we walk out of here today, celebrating T's life with us, but also his new life and eternal life, that we'll have a deeper sense of who we are because of him.
we'll have a deeper sense of who we are because of the person of Jesus Christ. And we can take the beauty and the glory of Christ's priesthood. We can also take his humanity with us today in such a way that we can maybe be that person that can offer hope. Maybe today we can be that person that gives someone the gift of our listening. Maybe today we can be that person whose faith has been touched and has deepened just a little bit more by our celebration of T's life, by our celebration of this Eucharist, and by our encountering Jesus Christ in this moment. The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. <clears throat> For Father Trusinski, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our brother, Father Trusinski, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who die by violence, war, and famine each day, may those who have died so unjustly be given mercy and gather them into the peace of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, especially Elmer and Olga Trosinski and Donna Wilson, and all who helped in any way during our lives, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Father Trosinski, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious Father, may the prayer of those who cry to you for the benefit of the soul of your servant, Father T, and for all of the departed, free them through your mercy and through the saving merit of Jesus Christ. And protect us all on our journey so that one day we may behold your face and live with you and once again enjoy the company of our brother, Father T, and take our place with all the saints in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Father T, your servant and your priest, may behold with clarity forever what the faithful here on earth to whom he ministered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, <clears throat> Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when the earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join with all the heavenly hosts in your unending hymn of praise. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. The kingdom of the power and the glory of yours is now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O Lord, for Father T, your servant and your priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries here on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and their reality as unveiled for him in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final commendation and prayers, Father Loomis, you had a few announcements you wanted to share with us. As soon as we're done with our celebration of T's life today and our celebration of the Eucharist, we'll be heading right down to the cemetery. Now, the name of it again, I'm sorry. Holy Cross, Holy Cross in Dakota. It's a long way away. Um, you're all invited if you would like. You'll have to drive yourself and get yourself back, though, so we'll go from there. And also, I see Paula Chamberlain in the third row sitting with the family. I just wanted to mention, you know, Paula, you did a beautiful ministry, take care of him, and he loved you dearly, too. So on behalf of the family, thank you very much. Amen. On behalf of my brother priests and deacons, I extend, of course, again to all of you, Father T's family, not only our love and support, but our prayers. And thank you for, as his family, I know you've extended his years by your love and by your care. For those of us who are diocesan priests, our families mean everything to us. It is you that we gather with for holidays and celebrations and birthdays and First Communions. And I know he would say thank you. Thank you for always opening your families and opening up your homes. And what a blessing you have been in not only Father's gracious and loving priesthood, but all these years you've extended that life. And Paula, thank you also for your kindness to him. And also today, our homilist, Father Loomis, a dear friend of Father T, but also lived with him and cared for him. And I know Father has also not only appreciated him, but extended his years. The beauty of our liturgy is that we know death is not the end. And in the prayers that I will say, we are not only our hope is founded in the resurrection, but we say we will enjoy his company again. That means we're going to see him. We're going to enjoy his silence again. And we're going to enjoy his being with him. The one thing I'm not confident of, there'll be no smoking, though. I'm hopeful. <laughs> but count on everything else <laughs> in the kingdom of God. And only Jesus, risen from the dead, can take this mystery and turn it into new life. Let us pray. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Father T, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Father T again, and we will enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together in that joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith we share in Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Father T, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with the Lord on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Father T in this life, especially the gift of the one priesthood of Jesus Christ. For they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet again in Christ and are with you and with our brother, Father T, forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us now in peace take our brother, Father T, to his place of rest.
you, are you behaving? No. Are no. you behaving? I'm trying to. I'm trying. I gotta watch it. See, I told you. My job's never done. <laughs> Good to see you. You just behave yourself. Oh, you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good to see you. Huh?